know, there's been a a constant attack upon believers operating in the gifts of the Spirit and praying in the Spirit because these are the things that build us up that help us come into full age and maturity in Christ that help our mind come into edification to to be renewed in the spirit of our mind as Paul describes in Ephesians 4.23 because the writer of Hebrews in 5.14 he's, he's he says that he's, you know, and it's kind of glazed over because he says for strong meat or solid food, as the Greek literally means, just solid food belongs to those who are of full age, who by reason of use, uh, use of what? He just got through talking about these believers that he was writing having need that one teach them again which be the chief oracles or utterances of God and not such that have a need of strong meat or solid food for he who uh, partakes of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness so and in, in right down there in the following verse in 5 14 he says for strong meat belongs to those who are of full age who by reason of use use of the milk and then Paul describes the gifts of the spirit the milk in in uh, 1 Corinthians 13 whenever he says that uh, uh, for when that which is perfect and he's actually saying that when that which is of full age is come then that which is in part shall be done away you know and, and he describes someone that who is a baby says when I was when I was a child I spake as a child meaning I know in part I prophesy in part he said but when that which is uh, a full age has come that which is in part shall be done away and the Greek word actually means to to lose its usefulness, to to become unfruitful, to losing its usefulness in our life. It it served its person purpose. And as the writer of Hebrews is talking about, he says, uh, right after verse fourteen in chapter five, and you got to realize the Greek wasn't written without chapter verse punctuation commas nothing. You know, so he says, for solid food belongs to those who are of full age, who by reason of use of the milk have trained their senses, their spiritual senses of their mind to discern between good and evil. He, he says, let me go there real quick. Hebrews chapter... I changed my password in my 
my uh, email on my bio labs so uh, took me a took me a minute to pull it up I had to re-enter everything chapter 5 verse 14 is where he says but solid food belongs to those who are of full age eat those who by reason of use of the milk the, the gifts of the spirit that he describes that Paul describes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 he says have their senses exercised the Greek word means trained to exercise to train to discern between both good and evil that's what Paul is talking about in Ephesians 4.23 like putting on the new man and be and being renewed in the spirit of our mind and and we need the, and he describes that again in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, 10 6 and when he says having a readiness to punish every disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled or complete and talking about having come into full age that's who he's talking about in in Hebrews uh, 10 and, and uh, the Apostle Peter also is talking about and when he speaks of it he says for act, and, and Paul mentions it to Timothy when he says uh, 2 Timothy 3 7 for some are ever learning and never come able to come to the full knowledge the knowledge of the truth of the full discernment of the truth and Jesus is the way the truth and the life we need to understand that but he's but then he says here he says in chapter 10 he's talking about you know for the remains for at, at the once we've come to that place where we've come to the uh, knowledge of the truth, the full discernment of the truth, once we've come to full age in Christ, he says there remains no more sacrifice for sin, but a fear, certain fearful looking for of judgment. And it's really important that we see that. I mean, because uh, I was condemned by that for years, and, and it, it makes a person give up who isn't. Who, who sold out, who, who isn't wanting to be lukewarm, as Jesus said in Revelations. You, you know, I would that you were hot or cold, but since you were lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You know, you know, so we need to understand, we need to understand some of these things because Satan is, is using it to take sincere believers who wholeheartedly press into God, who are discouraged by not understanding. So he says, but strong meat belongs to them who are of full age. Those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. And he says, therefore, leaving or moving on from actually the principles or the the elementary teachings of Christ as as it had also rendered uh, by another translation of the doctrine of Christ let us go on unto perfection full age full age not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God you know and this this goes that statement goes right with 2 Corinthians 10 6 having a readiness to punish every disobedience once your obedience is full and the comment he makes in chapter 10 of Hebrews you know that once we've come to the full knowledge of the truth or the the full discernment of truth the knowledge of the truth there remains no more sacrifice for sin but a fear, certain fearful looking for of judgment and, and it's he says not laying a foundation again of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God of the doctrine of baptisms of laying on of hands of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment and this will we do if God permit I mean he just got through listing out the milk of the word 
he's describing the, the resurrection of the dead in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, you know, and there's really some important things there concerning us, like 1536, the body we sow is not given life unless it dies. And 1545, that Jesus was made a life-giving spirit, which he's describing in Romans 8, uh, chapter 2, where he says the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death that he just described in the previous verses, just a few verses back in chapter 7, verse 23, I see another law other than the law of Moses that he just described that made sin exceedingly sinful, he said, I see another law in my flesh waging war against the law of my mind and bringing it into captivity to the law of sin that is in my flesh. That is what the law of life in Christ Jesus made us free from, the law of sin and death that is in our flesh. That the, and he done that by freeing us from the law because the law is sin strength. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. And, and he describes that again in Romans uh, uh, 7, 6. He says, having died to what held us. Having died to the law that held us prisoners to sin. And he describes that in uh, Galatians 3, 22. For scripture has concluded the greek word actually means confined or imprisoned all under sin that the promise may be given to those who believe that's why he says that in another place for if righteousness came by the law then christ died in vain he is our righteousness he is our sanctification he we're circumcised with the circumcision of christ in baptism and putting off the Old man, the body of sin, as he describes in Galatians 3.27, as many as were baptized into Jesus Christ have put on Christ, clothed themselves with Christ, you know. And, but as he's, and, and baptism is how we get there because Romans 8.10, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, and the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But the way that we put the body to death for Christ to dwell in us is through the faith of Jesus Christ. We believe God raised him from the dead and confessed him Lord. And we're baptized into Jesus Christ and into his death. Romans 6, uh, 3. And again, he describes it in 1 Corinthians 15, 29. Else what are they to do with are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not? That is the purpose of baptism, is to plan us into his death. You know, and you can't do it into a trinity. You cannot do it into a trinity. There is only one name under heaven given by where we must be saved. As Peter told the, the rulers of the Jews in his time in Acts 4.12, when, when he said, if, if, if it be a question of names by which this man stands before you every whit whole, he says, let it be known that it is the name of the Lord Jesus, or name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that he stands before you whole. And they let him them go with a reprimand, seeing that they were ignorant and unlearned, is what the scripture says. You know, so we need to see the importance of the gifts of the Spirit to bring us into maturity. And Paul describes it in 1 Corinthians 13, but they're, they're, they're done away with. They just... Someone gets up behind the pulpit and he's not even preaching and teaching the principles of God's word. I mean, I don't even know what they're doing up there, but they're not being controlled and led walking in the spirit of God and teaching people to walk in the spirit of God. I mean, they've brought it back to where you're, you're, you're trying to do works. They're putting them back underneath the law. I mean, whatsoever is not a faith is sin. I mean, people, you know, believers aren't even viewed as sanctified and holy anymore. They're just viewed as sinners because John 1.8 is twisted out of context. But John is saying the same thing in chapter 1, verse 8, that Paul was saying in Romans 8.10, of Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. If anyone say, and John says in 1.8, he says, if anyone says they have no sin, they deceive themselves and they're a liar. 
Well, the law of sin is in the flesh. That's why it has to be put to death in the faith of Christ that we believe God raised him from the dead. And as Paul, as Philip told the eunuch in chapter 8 of Acts, he said, when the, when, when the Spirit of the Lord told him to go and join himself to the chariot the eunuch was in, and he came and he was reading from the book of Isaiah, and he was invited up into the chariot, and he began to preach to him Jesus Christ and him crucified, and no doubt he gave testimony to some of the things that Jesus done while he was alive before he was crucified and raised from the dead, that when they came upon water, the eunuch said, look, water. And, you know, nothing was said in there that Philip said anything about baptism, but no doubt it 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 was commonly known that that is how you enter into the life. As Peter said in Acts 2.38, on the day of Pentecost, when he rose and he preached uh, Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead and, and explaining the the first fruits on the day of Pentecost and people prophesying and speaking in tongues and over a hundred nationalities speaking, hearing them speak in their own language. Peter Peter came and, and preached from the prophet Joel and 3,000 Jews were added to their number that day. And he, they said, the prick to the heart, they said, what must we do? And Peter said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin and you shall receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. You know, in Acts 19, when Paul found the disciples that Apollos had uh, no doubt baptized unto John's baptism, when he, when he found them, he was like, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Well, he didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit because that isn't associated with the baptism of John. You know, so we need to... And, and when Paul explained the way to them more perfectly, they were all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and Paul laid hands on them. They did speak in tongues and prophesy. And these signs are for the unbeliever, as Paul describes in 1 Corinthians 14. Tongues are for a sign, not for the believer, for the unbeliever. And Jesus said plainly in the, in the Gospel of Mark, these signs shall follow. And you know, some of the newer translations have just mutilated that and changed that completely to where it doesn't even say that anymore. You know... We can't do it in the natural. We have to have the gifts of the Spirit. And Paul describes those things again in Ephesians a little more. He was like, you know, these... We need them. We need them. We cannot do it in the natural. And that's what everyone is doing because that's what they've been deceived into. And we need... God help us. God help us.